Jasmine and welcome back to my YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys different pharmacy careers because in reality, my biggest challenge right now is deciding exactly what I wanna do after I graduate. Um, so I did get this video requested to explain different careers. So if you guys are interested, make sure you keep watching. Also make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to know more about me, my lifestyle in pharmacy, and to get a dose of Jasmine. Also, if y'all hear something in the background, that's Diesel. He's running around my apartment right now. So <laughs> keep watching, y'all. Okay, so the first career I'm going to talk about is called clinical pharmacy or a clinical pharmacist. And essentially, this type of pharmacy allows you to work with a medical team to decide the best medication therapies for a patient. So right now, um, some pros I would say about clinical pharmacy is that it has great job security. <laughs> um, beyond job security, some pros are that you are able to practice at the top of your license. So um, in North Carolina, we have something called a CPP. Um, and it allows you to have your own patients, you shadow them, you follow them, and you recommend medication therapies. When they come into clinic, you can change different medications and you can actually write prescriptions. So a CPP is a great way to practice clinical pharmacy in North Carolina. Um, also some pros about clinical pharmacy, it allows you to um, work in a specialized area. So for example, if you wanted to be a pharmacist who specializes in oncology, you could do that. You could be a pharmacist who specializes in cardiology. And all of these are different options for clinical pharmacists. Um, so some pros beyond job security would be um, you're able to specialize in the area. So along with clinical pharmacy, um, this career path, you have to do a residency now. So after your four years of pharmacy school, you are required to do a one-year residency, which is general. And then beyond that, if you want to specialize in something, you can do a PGY2 residency or a second year residency program. So clinical pharmacy allows you to literally be a practitioner. Um, and some people like to call them physician extenders, but you are essentially the go-to person on the medical team for medication therapy recommendations. So if you see a pharmacist in a hospital walking around with a team, that is a clinical pharmacist. So the first career, clinical pharmacy. <laughs> Okay, so the next career opportunity is managed care pharmacy. And managed care pharmacy is a little bit new to me, but essentially I talked about earlier the transition to value-based care in the United States. So managed care pharmacists are essentially there to make sure that patients are healthy, happy, but also making sure that they're on the most cost-effective medications for their conditions. So managed care pharmacists work in a lot of different areas. Um, I'm most familiar with managed care pharmacists working for major payers or insurance companies, but there are also opportunities within healthcare systems. Um, there are also opportunities within pharmacy benefits managers or PBMs, but essentially the role is to use your clinical knowledge to make sure that the medications selected are effective, but also making sure that they are, again, the most cost effective. So some roles of managed care pharmacists would be like formulary management and development. So a formulary is the list of medications that an insurance company will cover. So managed care pharmacists are involved with that. Um, they're also involved with clinical programming. So the programs that payers will host so things like um, different initiatives to make sure the patients are healthy and happy. So managed care pharmacy is really, really interesting um, and it's really promising here in the United States. So again, I'm gonna list some information down below about managed care pharmacy um, because it is kind of new to me. So I want you guys to have the information that I have about it. So some pros of managed care pharmacy is that it allows you to combine your clinical knowledge with somewhat of a business aspect. So it allows you to utilize clinical information, but also apply it to the real world in terms of business practices. Um, it's also pretty rewarding because the overall idea is to keep patients out of the hospital and to improve their health um, in the right now. So things like adherence and making sure that patients take their medications. Managed care pharmacies create programming that help um, push patients to be healthier right now. So um, some cons of managed care pharmacy is that it doesn't always allow you to use all of your clinical knowledge. Um, and then also one con would be that it's relatively new and not a lot of pharmacy students know about it. So um, it can be quite interesting on the job search and trying to find a managed care residency program because not everybody is familiar like me. So <laughs> yeah, those are some pros and cons of managed care pharmacy. 
Okay, so the next career option I'm gonna talk about is nuclear pharmacy. And this can be a little bit interesting because not a lot of people know about nuclear pharmacy because I literally just learned about it when I entered pharmacy school. So nuclear pharmacists are the pharmacists that work in a hospital that create products that are radioactive or products that can be used for imaging, um, products that can be used for the treatment of certain medications, of certain conditions. So nuclear pharmacy is a pretty interesting career opportunity. It does allow you to utilize a lot of chemistry. Um, it allows you to work close-knit with a team to make these medication products. So nuclear pharmacy, I'm not extremely familiar with, so I'm gonna list, again, some information down below about it. But from what I know about nuclear pharmacy, some pros would be that it allows you to utilize more chemistry. So if you are a chemistry nerd and you love chemistry, nuclear pharmacy may be for you. Um, it also is not as saturated as other markets for pharmacy. So if you are interested in a career that allows you to graduate and potentially get a job right after graduation, depending on your program, nuclear pharmacy may be for you. Um, the Another pro would be that you don't necessarily have to do a residency after pharmacy school if you have the opportunity to take the relevant classes and get the relevant experience before graduating in nuclear pharmacy. So I know that my pharmacy school allows a track for you to do nuclear pharmacy, but not all pharmacy schools do. So sometimes it does require some postgraduate training, but it all depends on the program that you're in. Um, some cons would be that nuclear pharmacy has very interesting hours because of the half-life of certain medications. So you have to be able to make the medications and get them to the patient without them decaying. So the hours can be quite interesting. Um, it also is very, um, it's independent work and you do kind of work with a team, but you don't have patient interaction. And that may be a pro for some people. Um, beyond that, that's nuclear pharmacy. I'm gonna leave some information down below about it. So the next pharmacy career I wanted to highlight is operations pharmacy. So operations pharmacy is essentially the pharmacist um, at a hospital that makes sure every patient on the floor gets the medications that they need. Um, so essentially, I think of it somewhat as community pharmacy, but within a hospital. So they are making sure that medications are dispensed in a timely, effective manner, making sure that patients have access to safe medications, making sure that nurses know where medications are so that they can effectively administer them to patients. So operations pharmacy is quite interesting because it allows you to make sure that patients get medication without the patient interaction. Um, so in operations pharmacy, you can also do um, the clean room or the IV room. So pharmacists are involved in the preparation of IV medications, and these medications have to be sterile. So pharmacists are a part of the sterile process of creating products. Um, in operations pharmacy, you do some of the similar tasks that community pharmacists do. So. Um, verifying orders, checking orders to make sure they're okay, um, managing pharmacy technicians. So this is quite interesting, um, but it also allows you to see medications that aren't commonly seen in the community space. So you see medications that are used within a farm, I mean, within a hospital. So for example, chemotherapy medications that are made via IV, you wouldn't necessarily see that in a community pharmacy. So operations pharmacy allows you to do that. So I guess some pros and cons would be a pro, if you're not really a people person and you're not into patient interaction, um, operations pharmacy might be for you. You also don't necessarily have to deal with the insurance struggles that community pharmacies have to deal with because you don't really have much interaction with um, insurance companies. So that could be a pro or a con, depending on who you are. Um, a con that's directly related to the pro could be that you don't have much patient interaction. Um, a con could also be that Operations pharmacists have to work interesting hours as well because pharmacies and hospitals are open 24 seven. So if you are an operations pharmacist, you might not have the hours that you would want, but that could also be a pro because there's some flexibility in your scheduling. So operations pharmacy is the next pharmacy career. So the next career opportunity I wanted to highlight is community pharmacy. So this is what most people are familiar with in terms of pharmacy. And these pharmacists work in the community to make sure that patients have access to their medications efficiently and making sure that their medications are accurate. So um, these pharmacists can work in independent pharmacies, um, but they can also work in chain drug stores, which a lot of people are familiar with because they are all throughout the country. So beyond medication dispensing, community pharmacists also do something called medication therapy management or MTMs. And in the United States, we're transitioning to a more value-based care system. 
So instead of fee for service, um, things are shifting toward reimbursement for how well your patients do. So that's really exciting. So um, community pharmacists make sure that patients are adherent to their medications, which is a big one. So this makes sure that patients are healthy in the long term and it prevents major complications of certain disease states, especially for like diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and things like that. Um, community pharmacists also play an interesting role in a sense that we make sure that patients are on the correct medications and we can also recommend um, medications that are cost effective. Um, that's also a part of medication therapy management. So essentially community pharmacists do more than just dispensing medications. Um, we also do immunizations and I say we because I work in a community pharmacy. But we also do immunizations, especially during flu season. It's a really big season. Um, and beyond that, we make recommendations for non-prescription medications, so over the counter. So I think this is really important because in an era when people don't necessarily have access to care, community pharmacists are very accessible. People have multiple touch points with the community pharmacists. So we make sure that, pe that patients um, have access to care and that they don't have to go to a doctor's office if they don't necessarily need to based on over-the-counter recommendations. So community pharmacist, career opportunity number two. <laughs> okay, so some pros of community pharmacy um, is that it does allow you to practice within your license. And in community pharmacy, the salary is a little bit higher in the United States than other career opportunities such as clinical pharmacy. So one pro is the salary. Um, another pro is flexibility. So you don't have to work within the hours of like nine to five. You can work different hours. Um, there are some overnight pharmacy positions if you're into that. So it does allow you some flexibility within your schedule. Also community pharmacy lets you be the captain of your own ship. So in a pharmacy, the pharmacist is the highest person there. So all questions and things of that sort will be deferred to the pharmacist. So it does allow you to, I guess, be your own boss in a certain sense within your own shift. So some cons of community pharmacy. So the market is really saturated right now. So if you are a graduate and you don't pursue like residency um, and you go directly into the workforce as a community pharmacist, most often right now, um, I know in my area, you would start off as a floater which means that you will float between different stores. Um, you wouldn't necessarily be at the same location. Um, I guess another con would be the amount of work that you have to do. So community pharmacies work really hard. I don't know if people know, but making sure that everybody has access to their medications can be quite daunting. And also making sure that people get immunizations during the flu season. So community pharmacy is hard work. Um, going back to the pros, I guess another pro would be that right now community pharmacists have residencies. So it does allow you to be more innovative in community pharmacy and not just focus on medication dispensing. So those are some of the pros and cons with community pharmacy. So it seems like this video might be kind of long because I've talked about a number of pharmacy careers. So if you guys are interested in seeing more about pharmacy careers, if you wanna know more about opportunities beyond graduation, let me know down below because there are more pharmacy careers that I didn't get to um, and I could talk about them in another video. So if you guys are interested, let me know down below. As always, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Leave me some video requests down below. And again, thank y'all so much for watching. Make sure you watch my next video um, and y'all have a good one. And that's Diesel barking. Bye y'all.